This wonderful building, which is today New Bern City Hall, was built between 1895 and, and 1897, and it was actually built by the federal government because it was uh, an act approved by Congress, uh, appropriated funds to build uh, a new uh, uh, courthouse, customs house, and post office in New Bern. It became New Bern City Hall in 1935 because the federal government built a new courthouse, customs house, and post office at the corner of New Street and Middle Street, a very handsome Georgian revival building. This building became available and the city of New Bern decided to move a half block from the old uh, courthouse on Craven Street uh, into this courthouse and of course into this city hall and it has remained uh, city hall uh, since that time. Fortunately, much of the building remains intact. The architects, uh, interestingly, were, were from the Treasury Department, the U.S. Treasury Department. And the builders of this building were from Chicago. That uh, indicates that it was a building of some significance for its day. Uh, when it was built, uh, in keeping with those architectural styles, uh, uh, they built the foundation out of a, a rusticated brownstone, rusticated meaning that it had, had sort of facets and features in the brownstone. If you look at that foundation outside, very handsome and substantial uh, brownstone foundation. And then on top of that, they built the first story with um, red pressed brick. And then the mortar was tinted red, uh, you know, which is unusual uh, for us today, but they didn't want the mortar lines necessarily to jump out at you. That was, And then many of the architectural features like those wonderful arches at the entry uh, with the, um, with the uh, um, uh, columns. Beyond there though, even on the first floor, the mayor's office as much as it was originally with uh, East Lake uh, finishes, uh, mirrors over mantles. Uh, one of the things that always surprises people is the number of fireplaces in, in this building. And uh, they all have uh, gas logs today, but they their fireplaces with mantles and over mantles. A lot again in the East Lake style, as is some of the furniture. And this is a good example, this uh, wonderful uh, hat and coat rack uh, and uh, umbrella stand, uh, which probably probably dates to the, uh, uh, to the opening of the building. Uh, there's still quite a number of pieces of furniture here that, uh, that date back to uh, that period. And as I say, in the late Victorian, a popular style was the East Lake, uh, the East Lake style. Many of the features uh, of the building, many of the lighting fixtures are the same as those which were originally installed. You know, one of the most significant features of this building, one that people are always drawn to, is the very tall clock tower, which is in many ways the emblem of Newburn. People are drawn to that uh, to that very distinctive clock tower. But that clock tower was not an original feature of this building. Fairly shortly though, after the building was built, people uh, asked, why is there no clock? I mean, here's this important monumental building. So a clock was added to one of the gables of the, uh, of the building and people said, well, that's, that's too small. No one can see it. So then they added a clock tower and the first clock tower, they said, that's too short. You can't even see it two blocks away. And so they added the wonderful monumental clock tower that we have today that in many ways looks sort of like an Italian Renaissance clock tower. I mean, it's a revival, but it has some Italian elements. Fits very well on the building. Most people, when they look at the building today, have difficulty imagining it without, without the clock tower. The clock works was Seth Thomas Clockworks, a very famous clockmaker and uh, very uh, large, uh, important works. And those works were abandoned several decades ago uh, in favor of more modern works, but the old works were left up in the tower. And as we began to prepare for our 300th anniversary in 2010, a wonderful group of volunteers who were very knowledgeable about clocks to take those works down and they are now in the North Carolina History Center at Tryon Palace. The arms of the clock, uh, uh, the hour and minute hand, have a big bright red bulb and each hour has a white bulb. 
So it's illuminated not by light that's shown on the clock, but the features of the clock actually have, have, uh, have, have bulbs that uh, outline the hours and, 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 and you can tell the time from a distance just by looking at the red bulbs and how they measure up with the white bulbs. And on the very top floor, actually up under the roof line, uh, there is this room that's marked closet, but when you open it, you see, interestingly, a, an enormous porcelain bathtub, which people here, uh, this room is now used for storage, but they refer to this as the judge's bathtub. So we assume maybe that when it was a courthouse, uh, the tradition was that judges could run up and take a little bath in between cases. Uh, but uh, for whatever reason, it, it is an enormous porcelain ball flip tub up here on the top floor. The small uh, white clapboard building behind City Hall is, is interesting. It is not on its original site. It was originally about a block away uh, uh, near the home of Judge William Gaston because that building was Judge Gaston's law office. And while Gaston was not a, a, a city official, uh, it's interesting that he's probably our best known jurist in, in, in the history, uh, or certainly one of the best known, and, 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 and he was a North Carolina Supreme Court judge. And of course, many of the functions of the city government take place other than in this building, although this is the heart, this is where the mayor's office, the city manager's office, uh, the, uh, the aldermen meet. Some people may not realize that even though we usually think of this as a three-story building, it's really a four-story building because there is a full operational basement. Well, while many people have been in City Hall, they perhaps have not been in the basement and don't know that this is a whole floor of offices and, and workspaces uh, that's, uh, that's uh, down underground here. And if you could go back and, and somehow pull from the walls the things that have, have gone on here that have made a tremendous difference uh, in, in, the, in the city of Newburgh.